Hello everybody, it's John Taylor here again and welcome to another one of my animation tutorial videos. Today I'm going to be showing you a simple technique and tutorial which is the bouncing ball. Now this is something that you learn quite early on when you're uh, studying animation. So I thought I'd just show you how to do a quick version of it in Toon Boom Animate. Um, so let me just show you what I've got here. I've got a, a ball which is on a drawing layer at the bottom here that there's then attached to the ball peg. And then we've got the guide, which is my black line here, which is the kind of guide that I want the ball to go along. And the floor layer is the black line here, this is the kind of horizon as such, the floor that's going to hit. And the colour card is the white background, which you can change to any colour if you want to. And the camera. So not too many things in the scene, quite simple. So to start off with, I'm going to go to the first frame and go to the animate button and move my ball over here to the start of my guide. Now, um, I'm roughly going to say that each bounce is going to be, say, 20 frames. So I'm going to go along to the 20th frame and move that along. Ooh, I've just got to extend my background, my floor, sorry. There we go. So on this frame, the ball is going to be there. So on 40, this is just a guide for now, just, 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 just to start the animation off. It's going to be there, and 60 is going to be over here off the screen. Okay, so then uh, in between those we're going to have the central point, so number 10 is going to be up here, number 30 is going to be up here, and 50 is going to be, whoops, um, 50 is going to be up here. So if we just play that, if I just come in here, and you can just see roughly what it looks like. Now obviously that is looks awful and, uh, and nothing like a natural ball, but it's just a starting point to give us something to work with. So the first thing you might notice, if I click on the peg layer, is the actual line that goes through the thing is all curved like this. Now a ball doesn't, uh, doesn't do that. So what we're going to do when it bounces is, is we're going to change what's called the tension of the peg. So over here in my function editor, if I just drag this out a little bit you'll be able to see it better. I've added my ball peg layer to the function editor and I'm going to go to the uh, path X. Now we need to find where it hits the floor which is the second peg and change the tension to 1 and hit return but watch this line over here it's an, oops, sorry, this one over here it's changed I've done the wrong one, haven't I? Yeah, then that one needs to be there. It's the third one, sorry. So we go to the third one. Hit one. And now this line, as it bounces, is now straight. So that, if I undo that, you see the the curl? Uh, that was the curl there, you see? If I uh, redo that, it changes to a bounce. So it comes down and it's a real sharp. So the tension's gone. Uh, and again, so when you go along two more frames and change that one to one as well. And actually that should do, so that's enough. So if we then now watch that back, from the beginning, it'll look a little bit better already. A bit more like a ball. Okay, so that's changing the tension to get rid of that sort of real curvy line. That's actually not looking too bad already. So timing-wise, I think that's pretty nice. Now, the, the second thing to consider is the speed of the ball. Now, obviously, as the ball is falling, it's getting faster. But then when it hits the floor, or it gets to its highest point, um, it's going to be at its slowest because obviously when the ball hits the floor all the energy is going out of the ball into the floor so it's going to squash down and then, then, then it'll be held on the floor ever so slightly and then bounce off the floor quickly as the energy is released again but then as it gets to its highest point sort of up here-ish it's going to slow down a bit and then get faster again as it comes down so to achieve this we can again click on the layer and then up here in the function editor go to the velocity which is the velo at the top there and you'll see over here all the little keyframes so what we want to do is go to the highest first keyframe of the highest point which is number two click on it in your editor and then just pull these little handles out a bit and that will add a bit of ease in and ease out on those on that um, frame. So then, then to watch it back and you see it, it just holds itself up in the air a little bit longer than it was before. So again that's not bad so we'll go to the next highest point which is keyframe 4 and dr again just drag it out ever so slightly watch it back see what you think. 
boing, boing. Yeah, that's not too bad. And then again, second to last keyframe, we'll just pull that out a little bit. And then, there we go. So that's looking all right. A little bit of ease in, ease out on those frames. Gives it a little bit of a natural bounce. And then the last thing to do, nice and, nice and quickly, is obviously as the ball comes down, and obviously this all depends on the type of ball. It could be a golf ball or a bouncy ball. But say we've got quite a squishy ball. Um, as the ball hits the floor, it's going to change shape. So obviously it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not going to stay this perfect round circle. So if you open up your ball peg and get to the drawing, we're going to add some keyframes. So I like to go along, and at, at the same as the peg, just add some keyframes at those same spots. Now here's my little uh, another little trick for you. So you go along to where the ball hits the floor, and then add a keyframe either side of of that one. Now on the one that hits the floor, we're going to just simply pull it down and squash it. So so push it in, and then make it like an egg shape, and then just pull it down to the floor. So then as the ball comes down, it's going to go splat on the floor and then bounce out again. And now you, what you can do is you can grab the end, the, set, the third keyframe of that series and pull it out to the middle-ish. So as it comes down, it's then going to re slowly reform back to a ball again. And actually you could probably do it a little bit longer than that, to make it a bit more natural. So you're going to see that bounce. So as it hits the floor, it's going to go spoink and then return to its normal shape again. Obviously I, I can fiddle with, fiddle with this for hours, this is only a quick one. And again, so over here, we're going to, on the bounce, we're going to add two keyframes. On the hit keyframe, we're going, you can actually go back and copy this one, I think, actually. There we go. And then on this one, we're going to pull it out so that it, it squashes and disappears again. So have a look at that. Boing, boing. Let's get rid of the, the guide for you. So here we go. It's not. I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, if I, if it was me doing it for a production, I would. I think it travels too far on the bounce, um, personally. As in it, the actual guide, I don't think. I think this should be slightly more here. Um, but it's, it's it's okay for this kind of little test animation. So there we go. That gives you an idea of how to do a bouncing ball with a few little tips and tricks with the um, tension and the sort of squash and stretch. So I hope you've enjoyed that, I hope it's been good, and um, watch out for the next video. Bye for now.